In this video, I'll show how you can import and use PyTorch models in MATLAB. While you can train neural networks in MATLAB, sometimes you already have a network in PyTorch that you want to import and use with MATLAB code, apps, or features. We will show two approaches for doing this, using MATLAB code to import the network programmatically and using the Deep Network Designer app to import interactively. In order to import and use PyTorch models in MATLAB, you will first need to install the Deep Learning Toolbox Converter for PyTorch Models support package, which can be done from the Add-ons Manager. This video uses a sample model that comes with MATLAB, but if you are following along with your own PyTorch model, make sure it is saved in a traced PyTorch model file with a PT extension. To learn how to do this, check out the PyTorch documentation for the trace function, which is linked in the description. With that in mind, let's get started. First, we'll go through the process programmatically using the MATLAB function import network from PyTorch. First, specify the path to your saved model, then pass it to the import network from PyTorch function. You also have the ability to specify some additional information or options to ensure the model is imported correctly, so let's specify the input sizes. This network expects a 224 by 224 color image as input. Specify the input size using PyTorch rules for dimension ordering, which for images is the number of observations, number of channels, which is three for the red, green, and blue channels of color images, then height and width of the image. This imports the model as a DL network object, which is the MATLAB data type for neural networks. You can now use this model for inference further training, or however you would use a model in MATLAB or Simulink. Let's visualize the network using the Analyze Network function. See how the size of the input layer is now height by width by number of channels by number of observations, which is the MATLAB format for images. As we saw with the PyTorch inputs, the three channels represent the red, green, and blue channels in that order. You can use the model by reading an image and, if necessary, resizing it to match the input size expected by the network. Then, you'll need to perform the pre-processing steps that were performed on the training dataset so that the data is consistent with what the model has seen. In this case, rescale and normalize the image. You'll also need to know what classes the model was trained to classify. You can get this information from the source of the model in most cases. In this case, we'll get the class names from a different network called SqueezeNet that was trained on the same dataset. Now you can use the predict function to use the neural network to classify the image. It will generate a list of scores for each possible class. So use the score to label function to map the scores to class names and identify the predicted label. Here you can see the image is classified as a bell pepper. Please note, it is important that the order of class names matches what was used during the training of the model. Let's move over to the Deep Network Designer app, which is a way to visually and interactively import PyTorch models. Open the app by typing Deep Network Designer or find it under the Apps tab in MATLAB. In the window that opens, select From PyTorch, then paste the path to, or browse to, your PT file and click Import. It will take a few moments to validate and convert the model to a MATLAB network. Then the app will generate an import report, which summarizes the imported model and shows any warnings or errors thrown during the process. Here, we see that we need to specify the input size. Click on the link in the Fix column and update the input size to match the expected input size of the model. Once loaded, you can visualize the network architecture and edit layers, all without writing any code. When you're ready, export the model to your workspace and use it just like any other MATLAB deep learning model. And that's it. All it takes is some basic information about the PyTorch model, like the input size and class names, and a few clicks or a few lines of code and you're ready to use your PyTorch model in MATLAB and Simulink. Check out the links in the description for the examples that were shown in this video and for more information. Thanks for watching.